So how many here want to praise the Lord today? Amen. Because I do. Right? No. And then, what, that, what does that mean real quick? Right? You know, I had a, a rough week this week, Pastor. But, you know, in the midst of everything that was going on, in my mind it kept saying, I have breath, so I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and what that means is, in the midst of whatever you're going through, you're going to praise the Lord. Right? That means that we're going to have joy inside of us no matter what happens. So if today you're joyful, because I'm joyful, I hope all of you guys are joyful, the youth up there is jo joyful, we're all joyful, so we're going to get up and we're going to praise the Lord because can we all just take a deep breath as we, as we get up? <laughs> we have life, right? So we're going we're gonna to praise the Lord today, amen? amen. So we're just going to pray before we start it. Our worship team is going to lead us into worship, and today it's all about Jesus, amen? amen. All right, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this morning. I want to ask you, Lord, that uh, today, Lord, that this, this service is all for you, Lord. We want to praise you. We want to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do today and day out, Lord. And we just want to ask you that today you take control over the service in Jesus' mighty name. And his church says,
seems like, no matter what it feels like, we praise the Lord. Amen.
worshiping my heart shot all the way from the top of the I was running. I said, I have to go, I have to go. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning, you up there. Good morning, Pastor Helica, Carlos, Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike, I heard them all the way from the toddler room. And I was doing my worship, and I said, I gotta go, Lord, I gotta go. <laughs> I miss you guys. I miss uh, giving an offering and praying for the offering. I miss my family here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get a scripture out of the Psalms. And it's um, 27, 27. Uh, 13 and 14. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Father God, we come to you right now, Father God, and we just want to pray for the tithes and the offering, Father, for the health. For everything, Father, for the loss that we have, Father God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for everything. I thank you for Frank's little grandma, Father God, that she went home with you already, Father God. Thank you for 98 years, Father God. 98, Lord. Precious, precious memories were placed here. I just want to say thank you to everyone. And, Father, we just ask you to bless as we get ready to go into this season of thanksgiving, Father God. And let us not forget, Father God, to gratitude, Father God, that you give us, Father God, everything, all your goodness, Father God, that we hold on to, Lord. I thank you, Father, and I love you, Father, and we just pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Thanksgiving. I'm only ready for Thanksgiving this morning. All right. I'm so thankful for so many things that I can't even, that if I were to take pages and pages, and I still run out of giving thanks for so much of what God has done. How many feel like that in the place today? You can give thanks to God. He is so good, isn't he? Yes. God is so good. I want to give first an appreciation, a shout out to all those that work with our youth, our student ministry, that work with our kids' church, that work on Wednesday nights with all our youth that come out, and for all those that work in the toddler room. I want to give, can we just give a, a good clap to the Lord for all those that are helping to be able to equip our youth. And are our worth uh, is there worth in our students and in our kids to be able to pour into them and to teach them? I think that it is the greatest thing that we can do. I'm so thankful today. And I want to take over these next week. Did you know that there are only three Sundays left in November? <coughs> and we're already, I was in the donut shop this morning buying for the cafe, and I heard Christmas music. I thought, it's already here. It's upon us. And my heart is just so full of thanks for so many things. And I want to open up with the scripture this morning because over these next three weeks, my goal is to be able to take what I'm going to read to you and to be able to have us understand what it is to have the peace that passes all human understanding. Wouldn't that be great to have peace? When you think about peace that passes all human understanding. So I'm going to go to this scripture and I'm going to go past 4, 6. I'm going to read verse 7 too. I'm going to read this out of the NASB. I'm going to start with verse 6 here. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It surpasses all human comprehension. So everything that we could possibly imagine, we see the Apostle Paul telling us here that this is part of the Gospel message. The Gospel message, good news, peace that passes human understanding. When we look at the landscape of America today, and we see the drugs, we see the alcohol, we see the prescription drugs, we see all of the vacations that people are searching for peace, and when we finish all of that, temporary. It is all temporary. So what is it that they're searching for? It isn't the meaning of life only. Just to have a little peace, and their life. How many here today have had sleepless nights? I'm not too proud to say that I've had sleepless nights. And there's this worry factor when you see that Paul is dealing with this and he's writing to us that it's almost 2,000 years ago and most people that I talk to, they will not admit that they worry. Probably today if I were to come to most of you in this place and I ask you the question, do you worry? You say, oh, well, I don't know. I don't think so. Well, yeah, maybe a little. Well, that is probably because most people don't fully understand some of the feelings that we're experiencing. The New Testament was written almost 2,000 years ago. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 6.34. He said things like this. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Amen. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So Jesus dealt with this issue, this complex issue that society right now is dealing with on every level. Is there peace in the Middle East right now? No. no. Is there peace in America right now? No. Is there peace in most homes in America right now? Is there peace in our neighborhoods right now? So when we look at this, we see that this is more about Jesus. This is more about a peace that can not be gained by anything that we do here on earth. 
I was thinking as I was praying this morning, I was praying to God, I was saying, Our Father which art in heaven, how would be thy name? How majestic, how amazing, how grand, unsearchable you are. And then, and then we say, as we say that prayer, that we're praying that things will be on earth as they are in heaven. And how is it in heaven today? Perfect peace. How do I know that? Because these men that spoke all the way from the Old Testament all the way through to Revelation, there is a gospel message in everything that you read. And in this gospel message, it's what does the gospel mean? Good news. And when there is good news, there's hope. And when there is hope, you can see that there is a peace that passes all human understanding. So when we look at this, and Jesus says to us, each day has enough trouble for its own. Planning for tomorrow is time well spent. How many have on their phone this calendar that pops up and it tells you everything that you have planned for the week and for the month? I meet with guys all the time because I meet with a lot of guys that are corporate, a lot of guys that are in companies. And the first thing you do when I ask them, I say, well, can you meet with me on this day? They say, let me check my phone. So it is time well spent planning for tomorrow. Would everybody agree with me on that, that we, we need to plan for tomorrow, but sometimes worrying about tomorrow is wasteful time. This is what Jesus is telling us here. And sometimes it's different, difficult to tell the difference between worry and planning. And as I said, it's my goal over the next three Sundays to have us take a fresh new look at what brings true peace. That you might even have someone say to you, I want what you have. Have you ever had anybody say that to you? You're in the workplace and people that you know, and they come to you and say, I want what you have. And they don't even know exactly what that is. And they're asking and they're saying, but they're seeing something in you. They're seeing a peace. They're, they're seeing this where you're not stressed. And everything else around us is stressful and it's falling apart. And they're looking at you and saying, how, how do you do this? And you say, I don't. I don't do this. This is because I have the gospel message in me. And I believe that Jesus is the answer to everyone's problem. I trust in Jesus, and I know that there's hope. And this is not all there is. You know, I can understand why people will take and get on prescription drugs. I can understand why the, and I didn't want to talk about this, but it, it bears mentioning, I can understand why the marijuana industry is booming. I understand it. I understand why there's billboards when I drive up and down the freeway. Why that there's a billboard, it seems like every three or four miles, and now they deliver it for free. I understand that. You know why? Because people are searching for peace. People are trying to find a numbness to what they are facing every day, and they don't even want to think about getting up in the morning, and so there's a numbness that they can bring upon themselves, and Jesus is the answer. Do we believe that in this place today? That's Jesus right. is the answer. Yes. Yes. He will bring you a peace that passes all human understanding. And I'm thankful that we have been placed, though we are small right now, though we do not have a lot of people here yet, we have been given a big building here, 24,000 plus square feet, with all of this land that stretches all the way from Sierra Way to Mountain View, and we must understand that we have the light, we have the answer living inside of us, so when we begin to invite, and we're getting ready to do that, I'm excited about it, we're getting ready to go into the neighborhood, because we're going to have a big Christmas event. And it's not just about all this toys and all this that we're going to give away, but what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to go knock on a bunch of doors, and we're going to invite some people to come out, and we're going to celebrate the birthday of Jesus. Does that sound like a good idea? And when we do that, we're going to get a lot of people that are going to come in that are searching for peace. And I love praying for people. Because some people, you will pray for them. They don't even understand what it is they're searching for. And you begin to pray with them. You begin to talk with them. And all of a sudden, they'll start crying. You know why they cry? Because they feel the presence of the Lord. And when they feel the presence of the Lord, they're feeling a peace that they want. And so they begin to break. And there's nothing better than being in the presence of the Lord. That's right. To be able to be in that place where everything's going to be okay. 
And that's why when we get to look at this, I'm going to bring it out over the next several weeks. You know, we've had people, and this is an introduction to really get into this. We've had people that have come to us, and I've had people come to me. And they tell me, they say, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. And this is coming from somebody that isn't having any problems. This is coming from somebody that is living a life. They've got money in the bank. They've got a house. They've got a car. They've got everything set for them. They've got perfect health. And they're coming to me and they're saying, everything's going to be okay. Well, I want you to understand, the guy that wrote this, the guy that we're going to be reading and studying about, it was anything but okay. And when you look at the earthly circumstances, he had people looking for him to kill him. On every turn, he had people waiting at cities to where the Holy Spirit had to warn him, don't go there because they're waiting for you to kill you. Turn and go this way. He was looking at, knowing at the end of his life that he was going to be executed. This is a guy that was stoned and left for dead. This is a guy that when he tells you, I have been without clothes, I've been without food, I've slept in cold, I've been in dungeons, I've been for not ever even doing anything wrong, not being guilty, I was innocent, and I've been put in chains. Now when a guy like this tells me everything's going to be, I believe that he's got something, he's, he's tapped into something that I understand, he understands that there is more to this life than meets the eye. That's why I can take it from Paul to say, there's a peace that passes all human understanding, no matter what you're going through. Amen. I've been with saints that have been around a long time, and they are facing cancer. They are facing some of the most, when you think about traumatic things, things that will take most people and take them out, and they sit and they look at me, these older guys, these older guys and they smile, and they just say, Jesus is with me. And it's like that he's in the room and he's holding their hand. In the midst of all the chaos, and then when their own life is affected, and they're looking at something that's very serious, and they say, Jesus is with me. Thank you, Lord. Because I know it's the gospel. I know that it's good news. And I know that God is with me, and I am not alone. Do you know you're not alone this morning? Can you say that this morning? I am not alone. Imagine being anxious about nothing. When you, when you look at this text that we're looking at, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. So when you look at this, you immediately say, how can I be anxious about nothing? Now, I know a lot of people that worry, and all of us are susceptible to worry. Could we, could we come to a place in here where we'll not be too proud and we'll say all of us are susceptible to worry? Would you, can we admit I'm susceptible to worry? I'm not too proud to tell you that with everything that I have on me, with, as some of you know, with the men's home and with all the finances and, and all of the things with the church and all that we're doing, and, and much, much more than that, I have my own family. We are susceptible to worry. So what do I do? And we're going to, over the next several weeks, we're going to be able to unwind all that so that you know what you do when that begins to come on you. Wouldn't you love to know what to do when in the middle of the night you start to have all this weight come down on you and you wake up and then you start to worry? Yeah, Wouldn't you know, love to know what to do? Yes, yes. Wouldn't it be great to have a peace that passes all human understanding? Yeah. Paul was a guy that could, he could understand what all of that weight of all, of all of what he was facing. Think of the weight that the Apostle Paul had on him. Imagine, just for a moment, if you read about his life, all the things that he went through, and he's teaching us this. <laughs> so with worry comes nervousness. And when you look at it, it's usually about something imminent or an event or something with an uncertain outcome. Now, I went in to the dentist several weeks ago. They did something that they never do to me. They brought out a blood pressure machine. And I asked them, I said, well, why are you taking my blood pressure before you work on me with this procedure? And they said, well, a lot of people are really nervous about coming to the dentist. And when they come to the dentist, their blood pressure raises rises up to an unhealthy level, so we don't want to do any procedure on you until we know. So they have markers under your blood pressure over a certain amount, they won't even work on you. So I said, that's fascinating. 
I said, why would somebody be nervous about coming in here and getting their teeth fixed? <laughs> Do you know that some people, even when they hear the drill, the zzzz, you know they start to get nauseous? I actually know people that when they even hear the drill, they'll start to get sick. So I've looked at all this and I'm thinking, Paul, why are you telling us to be anxious about nothing? Well, when you look about this anxiousness, that it brings this worry, and then when you look at physiologically what it does to you, that you say, there's something to this, and I want to have this peace that passes all human understanding. You take your blood pressure at home, and your blood pressure is perfect. You go to the doctor, and all of a sudden your blood pressure is way, way up, and you, you tell the doctor, you say, how come my blood pressure was so good at home, but now I come down to your office for this checkup, and why is my blood pressure... And so I had this lady tell me, because... I was okay, but there were these other people who was like, wow, why is it so hot? And you know what the nurse said? said, Mike, have you ever heard of the white coat syndrome? It's like as soon as you see this doctor with this white coat, and he comes in and he's got this little stethoscope hanging, and he's walking towards you, and just being in the office and the smells and all of that, your blood pressure starts to rise up because there's this anxiousness that you don't even realize that you're experiencing, and many things in life will bring that anxiousness on you. Do you know that? How many have ever been before an interview when you're getting ready to go in for a job, and all of a sudden you, how many have heard of butterflies? Yes. Yeah. Or you're getting ready to meet, maybe you're a guy, and you really like this girl, and you're getting ready to meet the parents, and you get butterflies. <laughs> and your stomach is, how many have ever had butterflies? I've had them. And how many have ever gotten anxious? I've gotten anxious. How many have ever gotten nervous? I've gotten nervous. Well, he's giving us, Paul is giving us an antidote to be able to overcome this. So that, let me tell you something, folks. You better get ready. You better get ready for what's coming. Amen. Because we've been riding this perfect wave. So part of what I'm going to do over these next several weeks, it's not just about thankfulness. It's about being prepared so that you will be ready in all situations, in all circumstances, and you will have a peace that passes all understanding because America, and you're saying, you sure are a doomsday guy. No, I'm not. I'm just telling you what is coming. The Bible says it's coming. Amen. So we need to prepare ourselves. We need to be in that sanctuary with the Lord, enjoy His presence, give Him thanks, and tell Him about everything. Everything that's going on in your life, we're going to find this out over the next several weeks. You need to talk to God about it. So we need to get to this place where we don't worry. We need to get to this place where we don't get nervous. And we don't lose any sleep. Yes. Wow. Now, I looked at this a little further, and I found out about this system that God made of ours. This whole digestive tract that we have. And did you know that the digestive system contains the second largest number of nerves in your body. I just, some of you guys just learned something today. I didn't know that. Your digestive system that God made you with, were fearfully and wonderfully made, that it has the second largest number of nerves besides the brain. So it's no wonder that the medical science, many of them, you know what they term it as? The gut is the second brain. So do you know why God is telling us? Don't be anxious. You know what he's telling us? Don't worry about tomorrow. Just take care of today yeah. because tomorrow is going to take care of itself. Yes. That's right. Because he wanted us to be healthy Christians. He wanted us to be strong. He wanted us to be ready for anything that's coming and to know that it's only by looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, that we're ever going to be able to get to where God wants us to get. So, let's look at this with the Apostle Paul wrote. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now, I know one thing about life right now, getting to counsel a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, that there are a lot of people that feel alone right now. Many people are lonely, they feel like that they are on their own, and that nobody cares about them, and there's nobody to help them. So what is done, some of this, is this social system that we have right now has created this self-dependence attitude, and it's corrupted into society. 
I bet if I were to talk to a lot of you in here today, you feel like, well, I have to do this myself. I, I've got to be the one. If I don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. I've got to take care of my problems. And you begin to get self-dependent. Now, I want to tell you one thing. Jesus clearly said in John chapter 15, verse 5, he said that you can do nothing without him. You can do nothing without him. Jesus said you can do nothing without me. So when you're always trying to do things on your own, you make a big mess. I uh, have any people, that's, I'm going to raise my hand. Whenever I try to do everything on my own, I make a big mess. And there's a lot of worrying going on right now out there in America. So at first glance, when you read this text, it might appear that Paul is telling us, get over it. He's saying, you know, you don't need to do this, just get over it. Well, that's not what Paul is saying at all. He's not saying just forget about it. He's not suggesting that we sink down to a level of thoughtlessness. On the contrary, Paul is telling us to talk to God about it. Talk to God about it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer. But in everything, everything. So there's nothing too small for God. He's saying everything. So as you're sitting there this morning, and you're listening, and you're contemplating the scripture, and contemplating everything going on in your life, everything God cares about, everything in your life, I've learned to talk to God just like having a conversation with somebody. Amen. God knows everything, but still, He wants me to talk to Him about it. He even knows what you're going to talk to Him about, it, but He wants you to talk to Him. He wants you to bring up all the, the things that you're thinking and, and talk to Him just like if you were sitting, talking to somebody that you know. So when you get self-dependent, it's like this denial that we even need God. And when you rely on yourself, not much is going to work in your life. We've got to take and rely on God and only God and allow Him to come into our lives and give us that step by step to be a light unto our path. So look at the socioeconomic landscape of America right now. And some would say that we have all sunk into this all-time low. But God is not telling us not to think about it. He's saying, don't worry. I'm in control. Amen. God is in control. And He wants us to talk to Him about what we're going through. He knows how we feel. And He knows the challenges that we are facing right now. And He wants us to talk to Him about it. There's a difference between worrying about something and talking to God about it. Amen. Amen. And Paul said, in everything by prayer. And everything is everything. Say that. Everything is everything. We need help. We are not alone. And I'm so thankful that we can turn to God. And this is a scripture that is for Karen and I. When we've really been in some, looks like there's no way out. And I hope that all of you can look at this scripture right now. Whatever you're thinking about, all of the busyness in life, all the texting, all the appointments, all the work, all the challenges, everything that you're facing, that you can look at this scripture and you can see, and that's what I do. Karen and I do it all the time with each other. We look at this and we say, I will lift my eyes to the hills. Immediately when I do that, guess what it does? When I'm looking at my problem, and when I lift up my eyes, and guess what I do? I immediately quit focusing on the problem, and I start looking at God, who knows everything. Where does my help come from? from the Where Lord. does my help come from? from the Lord. You've got to, sometimes you've got to, you've got to say, self, where does my help come from? That's right, come on. It does not come from my job. It does not come from my intellect. It does not come from all of the degrees I have. Amen. It does not come by the house I live in. It does Amen. not come by the government. Where does my help come from? And the Apostle Paul, he figured it out. And when in the midst of everything that he was facing, he knew where his help came from. Jesus said, you can do nothing 
without me. So do not allow yourself to get into this that it's crept into society. I've got to take care of myself. This self-dependence. And when you get in that boat, you don't even realize how much you are depending on yourself. And you've left God out of the equation. And I've had many people say this to me. Well, Pastor, I tried everything else. Now I guess I should try God. Have you ever heard anybody say that? I've tried. I've ran out of all the other things. There's nothing else I can do. Now I'm finally to a place where I'm going to trust in God. Well, you should have started trusting in God. You should have started thanking Him. You should have started talking Him a long time ago. Every little thing that you do, you should hear my conversations with God. I mean, I break it down, and sometimes I'm talking to God, and I'm thinking, I don't even, I'm not even this real with myself. I try to take some of that stuff and just put it off, and by me talking to God about it, it actually gets me to a place where when He starts telling me how and where and how, what I should do, then it actually starts to come to me, because I've revealed it all, and I've opened myself up to God, and I'm being real about it. And God will give you an answer. Amen. I bet you there's a lot of people in this place right now that are looking for answers. I bet you there's a lot of us in here right now that we are not living that peace that passes all human understanding. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that is a give, give this a clap to God. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So, over these next several weeks, I want to take us through this passage to where we will come to a place when we're sitting at our Thanksgiving table. Because you can't even give thanks until you begin to break this down and realize what Paul is saying. How can you give thanks? A lot of people say, I don't have anything to thank God for. Look at my life. Look what's going on right now. So it's not about just what you have, it's what God has given you. It's what He is doing for you day by day. You know, if I told you that I got here today by myself, you know that I'd be lying. Yeah. <laughs> Every one of you in this place today, you did not get to this place right now, right now in your life. However many years have passed, that was so cool. You know, Jan is celebrating her 90th birthday yeah. coming up next week. That's just incredible. Could you imagine how many things that God has taken her through? 90 Ooh, years. Yes. She has a lot of testimonies. Oh, yeah. And I believe that God has gotten all of us in here to where we are today. So this whole month, Thanksgiving, it's giving thanks. But it's realizing why we can even give thanks. That He's saying, don't be anxious about anything. And if you are, start to talk to God about it. Let the peace that passes all human understanding come upon you in this month of November. And it'll take a little while. You've got to pray, and you've got to begin to read, and you've got to be able to talk this out with God. Amen. Wouldn't it be great if you could just go in like, everybody wants a quick fix today, don't we? We want the quickest fix possible. Everything's going to be delivered to you. Just call on the phone, hit that. When you drive in, you don't even want to wait for them to prepare, prepare it for you. You want to just call ahead, have it, walk in, just grab it, and you walk out. Well, that's not true with our lives. Our lives are, God wants us to talk to Him. He wants us to spend time with Him. And if you're one of those people that some like I talk to, well, I don't really need it. My life's okay. No, you do. You need God. And then you will find places in God that you never even knew existed. You will find that peace. And then you'll find your life starts to really come together because you know all of us in this room, God has a plan for us. He has a precise plan, step by step, of where He wants us to be right now. And do you know what He wants us to be? He wants, first of all, as we talked about several weeks ago, first of all, to please Him. God wants us to please Him. That's why He created us for His pleasure. We read the scripture together several weeks ago. So we're here for God's pleasure. And we have all these people around us that don't have peace then God wants us to be the salt and the light of the earth. He wants us to be able to, everywhere we go, He wants us to be able to influence. And that's why I'm so excited about what God has given us here. We have so many plans and we have a vision for this church to be able to go into this community. Wouldn't you love to see this place full of people that need Jesus? 
How exciting would it be to see hundreds of people getting saved? How exciting would it be to see people getting baptized? Now, that to me is exciting. There's nothing that can compare to seeing people get saved, seeing people get baptized, and seeing the peace that we have. So we can't be selfish, can we? The peace that God has given us, we need to take that and spread that around. Yes. And it's different than at Christmas they say spread the cheer. Spread the peace. You can't do it that way. It's only by us being dependent on God through Jesus Christ that came to live inside of us so that we may be able to take this whole last seven, eight weeks of this year. Imagine what we could do, you guys. Imagine what we could do if we begin to take this that God gave us and begin to share it with other people. Think of the lives that could be changed. And then the peace that you would be able to have. I want peace. I don't know about the rest of you, but I want peace. I don't want to have to go outside externally to try to take something, swallow something, or go to the mountains, or go on some vacation, or have some big block of money given to me, or go and win the lotto. That's not going to bring you peace. No. The only thing that's going to bring you peace is this peace that passes all human understanding, and that is by talking to God. That's by prayer and supplication. Amen. And then after you pray and you talk to Him, and you tell Him, all those things that are going on in your life, then look what it says. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. So, after you get through all of this, anxious for nothing, but by everything, prayer, by talking to God, and then, when you get done with that, don't forget, give Him thanks. As soon as you finish talking to Him, the prayer and the supplication, as soon as you finish, you might spend 15, 20 minutes talking to God about it. Don't forget it. As soon as you finish that, and thank you, God, for what you've already done. Thank you, God, for healing me. Thank you, God, for where I live. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my sound mind. Thank you for my health. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. When you begin to do that, you build something strong. I think some of you are getting it. You start to build this foundation that cannot be shaken. And now you will not become anxious as you used to. Will it still come on you? Yes. It comes on me. And then I have to immediately go back. You know what I do? In the night when that starts to come on me, you know what I do? With all this weight I have on this, I immediately go back and say, oh no, I thank you, God. I thank you for what you, you did it before, you're going to do it again. I, I'm going back and I'm saying, I know what you healed me, I know what you delivered me from, and if you did it then, you're going to do it again. And I give you thanks and praise for it, so now you're only going to think about today, and you're going to know that God, somehow, tomorrow, He's going to come up with an answer for you, instead of sitting there all night long, round and round and round and round. Have you ever done that? I sat there one night several weeks ago I said, this is absolutely stupid. Yes. Karen couldn't hear me. She was over there snoring. <laughs> and I'm laying there wide awake for three hours. I said, this is stupid. Because I can't solve this. And for me, worrying about it, all I'm doing is getting anxious. I'm causing my body not to be able to sleep even. i got to go back to what God said. And I just talked to him about it for about 15 or 20 minutes. And you know, when I started thanking him, all of a sudden, a peace came over me. And I looked at that stupid clock next to my bed. And I said, that's amazing. And I fell asleep. And I said, God, it's real. When I talked to you about it, instead of going into that dumb, round and round and round, the same thing, and then I'll find myself an hour later, I just said that. And you just said that. You just thought that same thought, that same thought, that same thought. This is dumb. But you know how many people are suffering with that right now, you guys? There are millions of people suffering with that. To where they have to medicate. They have to do things that are killing them. So you do one thing. Have you ever read the side effects, you guys? Oh, You take one thing. I know, because I took something that almost killed me. Yep. And I thought, this is... This is crazy. You take one thing to help yourself, and you got all these side effects. By the time you read the side effects, I'm not taking that. Taking that. What are the side effects of not worrying and giving everything by prayer and petition and by giving thanksgiving to God? What are the side effects? A peace that passes all human understanding. Yes. 
And that's what I want for all of us. To go through this Christmas season and to go through the rest of this time that can be stressful. We got to get a whole bunch of people together. It's like herding cats and dogs to get your families together. But we can have peace that passes all human understanding because we're going to talk to God about it and we're going to allow Him to be God because He's in control. He's in complete control. But you've got to get to the place where you allow Him to be in complete control. And you've got to come out of what... And if you say, well, you know, I know there are millions and millions of other people that are having this problem, but I don't. Well, you just told the first lie right there. <laughs> Because Jesus wouldn't have told us, don't worry about tomorrow, almost 2,000 years ago. And the Apostle Paul wouldn't have taken up this whole text to tell us, don't be anxious about anything. But instead, he would have never written it down for us to read almost 2,000 years later, unless right. it was something that plagued mankind. Yeah. And so I'm here today to tell you that we can come up out of this. Yeah. And if you're too stubborn to say that none of this applies to you, then you need to step back about 18 steps and you say, God... I need to talk to you. Because if I think that I'm not susceptible to this, and if I think that this is not going to do anything to me, then I'm wrong because I'm just like the rest of the human race and only through you. Because Jesus said, you said I can do nothing without you. That means I can do nothing without you. So I'm going to let you come into my life so I can begin to do the things that you called me to do. You know many people never even find their calling. They never even get to where God wants them. They live and they die without fulfilling what they were born to do with Amen. because of that very thing that I'm talking about right now. They stay paralyzed. They stay incapacitated because their whole life they are hung up in exactly what Paul is saying. Don't get hung up in you guys ready to move on? I'm ready to move on. Right. I want to go to those places that God's called us to go to. I want to rise up out of this so that I will not be plagued with all this junk all around me. Oh, yeah. So now I can be a light. Now when I go and I talk to people around me, they will actually say, wouldn't that be the, the, the best thing that you could ever hear? I want what you have. Wouldn't that just blow your mind? And people that don't even know you, they just hang around. And then you know what we do? That's easy. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Believe in Him. And you can have exactly what I have. Wouldn't that be exciting? Amen. That's, that's worth living for. Yes. That is worth living for because everything else is going to, I assure you, is temporary. In case you didn't know, everything's temporary. Everything's going to go away. Everything's going to fall apart. Everything's going to be over. It's going to end. Except Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He's the one that was. He's the one that is. And the one that is to be. And I, you know what? I, a lot of times I just preach myself happy with that. Because when you guys aren't around and I'm happy, I'm saying he's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the one. song as we leave out of this place. I want to encourage you to encourage somebody else. Encourage them with the joy of the Lord that's in you and on you. I want to encourage you this week to go up to people. And I even have people that I don't know and I love it when I hear them say, have a blessed day. When they say, be blessed. Doesn't that just encourage you and raise you up when you're out in the marketplace and somebody says, have a blessed day. Be blessed. And then, you know, I meet that turn around and say, you know Jesus, don't you? And they say, yeah, I do. What an exciting thing to be the salt and the light, to be carrying Jesus, to be someone that is actually with God and Jesus living in you so that you might go out and you might tell others about Him. He's worth telling about, isn't He? Isn't He worth telling about? Amen. Thank you. Thank you.